What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty awesome low-cost device from Ambernick known as the RG35XX. The price on this is coming in around $55 over on their website and I'd say it's a great low-cost pocketable device but you got to keep in mind with these lower cost devices we're going to be limited on you know how high we can go with our emulation. Basically with the RG35XX and the operating system it's running out of the box we're only going to be able to go up to PS1, but we've got a lot of stuff that we can play here, and it does all of it very, very well. Now, with the price point and the form factor here, this is definitely going to compete with something like the Myo Mini, and if you're into a smaller device, then the Myo Mini would definitely be the way to go. But if you thought that one was a bit too small, then the RG35XX might be perfect for you. Now taking a look around the device, over here on the right hand side we've got dual micro SD card slots, a reset button, and our power button. Moving up to the top, this does have mini HDMI out, we've also got two LED indicators. Over here on the right hand side we've got our volume rocker, and on the bottom here we've got a 3.5mm audio jack and USB Type-C. The button layout here is pretty normal, we've got A, B, X, Y, menu button, start, select, and our D-pad. Now I do have to say that the D-pad here isn't on par with some of the other Ambernick devices. Now I'm a huge fan of their D-pad design, but with the way the shell is set up on this, it is a bit limited. It just doesn't feel the same as some of the other ones that we've seen in something like the RG355M. Now don't get me wrong, it is usable and we will be doing some testing by the end of the video. Totally works out great for platformers and fighting games. I just personally don't think it's on par with some of their other handhelds. And finally, around back here, we've got our shoulder buttons and our trigger buttons. Now, some people are into this design, some people don't like it, but, you know, with the power this thing's putting out and the emulators available right now for the RG35XX, it works out great. Now, we didn't need any kind of linear triggers or anything like that. It's just kind of the reach over to the shoulder buttons. So this handheld is a bit different from some of the other devices that they offer. When it comes to the operating system, it's pretty locked down right now. It is based on Linux, but there's not much that we can do. It's not using Android, and it's not using Emulation Station. But when it comes to the specs, we've got a quad-core ARM Cortex-A9 CPU. The GPU is a PowerVR SGX 544MP. We've got 256 megabytes of RAM. A 3.5-inch IPS display with a resolution of 640x480, it is fully laminated, and the viewing angles on this are great. Also puts out some really nice colors. It's also got a built-in vibration motor and a 2100 milliamp hour battery. Now, they're claiming 5 hours of gameplay, and I could definitely see you get there if you're using the lower-end emulators. I've personally been averaging around 4 hours with PS1 emulation on this unit. Taking a look at the operating system, like I mentioned, it is a bit different from what we've seen in the past from them. It's not Emulation Station, it's not Android, this is a custom Linux operating system built for this unit, and we may see it on others in the future. I think it does work great for these lower cost devices. We've got a lot of settings in here, but it's just not as customizable as something like Emulation Station. Now there are a few things that we can actually change here to kind of make it your own, but uh, not a ton. Now we've got an icon set, we can also change the background. With the icon set, it's basically the theme, so if we head in here, we've got a few to choose from. I'm going to go with this, I think it looks pretty good. So once we apply that, our main menu is going to look a bit different. There's also a few preloaded backgrounds that we can swap to, but personally I like the black one, I think it looks pretty good. So just heading into the PS1 section, as you can see, we're just going to scroll through here for some games. We've got some artwork, be it, uh, you know, a screenshot or box art. And right out of the box, this supports PlayStation 1. We've also got some vertical games, CPS, Neo Geo, FBA Hacks. We've got some main games, Game Boy Advance, NES, Super Nintendo, Sega Master System. We've also got Mega Driver Genesis, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, PC Engine, Neo Geo Pocket Color, Game Gear, and Wonderswan Color. So obviously we are a bit limited, we're not going to be able to go up to Dreamcast, and even if we could, the hardware here just isn't going to handle it. But for what we have here, it does work great with this CPU and GPU combo. And we got to take a look at the price too, I mean, coming in at $55, I love these vertical handhelds, I call them DMG style, it does fit directly in my pocket. Definitely a bit bigger than the Mayo Mini, but some people wanted something a bit bigger. And this 3.5 inch IPS display looks great. We've also got that front facing speaker. Overall, viewing angles are awesome on this. And yeah, I mean, for these lower end games and everything that we've got loaded up on here, it makes for a great little pocketable device. 
I've been really enjoying GBA on this unit. Another one I really like playing on this is PC Engine. And when it comes to PC Engine emulation, it basically runs on anything. And yeah, I mean, the highest we can really go with this right now is PS1 with the operating system we have out of the box. Now, maybe in the future, we'll see some more emulators added to the same operating system or maybe some custom firmware. But for now, we've still got thousands of games that we can play and they all run really well. So while playing any of these games, we can press the menu button and we're going to get a few different settings. We can save and load here. We've got five slots to choose from for each game. We can load up really quickly. You can reset the game from here and we've got a few screen filters. So right now I'm set in fast mode. I think it looks great like this. We've also got a dot matrix mode. Not too bad. Does work out really well with original Game Boy and Game Boy Color. There's a scan line mode, and we've also got HD, which does smooth everything out. I'm not a huge fan of this. Usually, I've just been leaving this in fast mode, and I think it looks great on this display. Next thing I wanted to do was show off this D-pad. I've got Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, and this is the PlayStation 1 version, so I could get over to the practice mode. But I have been running a lot of CPS fighting games on this, and they run great. So, uh, like I mentioned, this D-pad isn't as great as some of the other Ambernick devices, but it is totally usable, and I really think it comes down to just the shell itself. If there was a little bit of a concave underneath that D-pad, I think it would be just as good as some of the others. But uh, as you can see here, we can pull off our special moves just fine. It's really about that flat surface and just kind of bottoming out when you're uh, trying to pull off those moves. Now one thing I'd love to see in future firmware updates, if we ever get any, is the ability to kind of change the color for Game Boy games. Right now it's just black and white, and from the menu we don't have any settings. It would have been nice just to have a few different colorization settings, like uh, the pea green, maybe blue, purple, red. But unfortunately, the way it is, we're kind of stuck with black and white right now. Now from the menu, we've also got a search function, which does work out well for finding the game you want to play, because it really sucks scrolling through a bunch of this stuff. Like, for instance, Blazing Star was one that I was trying to find in Neo Geo, and I could search for it, start playing it directly from here. And when it comes to Neo Geo games, I've went through a few of these, like the Metal Slug games, and uh, one of my favorites is Blazing Star, and this is one that I could play all day on this little handheld. But the main thing I've been messing around with on this handheld is PlayStation 1 emulation, and I'm actually surprised at how well it runs. Now, I completely understand that PlayStation 1 basically runs on anything nowadays. We've got some really good emulators, but it's pretty cool to have a device this small in your pocket that you can just pull out basically anywhere and start playing your favorite PlayStation 1 games. Even something like Tekken 3 runs at full speed. I mean, it's actually a really enjoyable experience to play these PS1 fighting games and even racing games on this handheld. So in the end, with a price point like this, if you're looking for a nice little pocketable device you can carry around with you basically anywhere, then I think that the RG35XX is a great choice. Now, like I mentioned, this one is bigger than the Mayo Mini, so if you're looking for that super small form factor, then definitely go with the Mayo, but the RG35XX does come in larger, and a lot of people were wanting something like this at a price point around $55, and we finally got it with this one. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in learning more or maybe even picking one of these up, I'll leave some links in the description. And if you've got any questions, let me know down below. But like always, thanks for watching.